Well, I have my piece of brass here, all polished up and uh, drilling the first bore hole here. And I went through a series of drills, 6, 8, 10, 14, and finally was drilling a 17 millimeter hole and the next step would be to use a boring tool. Um, but I was drilling this hole and the tool jammed and the motor suddenly stopped turning and now my motor doesn't go at all. Nothing. So I think I burned the motor out. It does have a um, thermal um, cutout switch on the end of it that's supposed to pipe out if it overheats. But I guess that doesn't throw out if it's just got, got too much current going through it. Um, well, it so happened, by serendipity, the day before, I had been at a market in Kaitaia and came across these motors. And I said, well, they might come in handy. I've seen that... that uh, other people have used these um, as um, lathe motors or drill motors um, and uh, I decided to, them on the, to buy them on the spur of the moment for 10 bucks each and brought them home and then my own motor burned out so I've got a project on my hands I wasn't really expecting quite so soon. So um, this is uh, a motor out of a treadmill and as you can see on the left hand side it says uh, 2.5 horsepower at 4700 RPM and that's constant duty at 180 volts and requires 8.5 amps for constant running. Uh, the field is PM which is permanent magnets. Uh, it so happens that um, this is exactly the same as used by other members of the Boxwood users group um, and should be perfect for the lathe. Now the gold motor was three quarters of a horsepower and this is 2.5 horsepower. I've done quite a lot of calculations on this um, and um, the, I used a multimeter to measure the resistance through the red and black leads and it's 2.2 ohms and if you put 180 volts on 2.2 ohms it'll draw 82 amps so if we just turned 180 volts on immediately with the uh, motor stationary it would immediately draw 82 amps which is probably too much for anything to handle and so the uh, speed has to be slowly ramped up so the plan is to install this um, motor in the lathe in place of the old existing motor which is here uh, because the old motor does 1425 rpm and the new motor does 4700 rpm I'm going to have to use a much smaller pulley or otherwise just compensate by changing these gears the pulleys on the lathe itself uh, we don't want the spindle going more than about 2000 rpm in fact the standard uh, plug on the lathe goes up to a maximum of 1300 rpm in the top left hand corner I did pick up another motor at the same time and unfortunately it doesn't have a label on it so I don't know exactly what its specifications are but its uh, coil resistance is 14.4 ohms and it's a much smaller motor uh, so I'm picking that's about a 1.25 or 1.75 horsepower motor uh, and um, when stationary it could draw um, a maximum of uh, 12 amps and uh, produce three, three horsepower. This one, when it stalls, could theoretically produce 20 horsepower, but only if you give it 82 amps. Uh, so far, I've removed all the gears from the gear train. So we're just left with the stud, gear, stud shaft sitting there. Um, that means I should be able to remove the head. But it does have a belt going back here, and I'm going to have to um, remove that belt um, and uh, you may remember that this piece can actually be removed. There are two uh, cap head bolts in the bottom of here um, and they require an Allen key of course to undo them and then this whole piece comes off and then I'll be able to take the belt off here. And that will then allow me to remove the head. Turning the camera upside down you can see better that there is a clamp that clamps on the underside of the bed and there's uh, a nut you can barely see under there. This is the other end of the head and is connected to the bed the same way with a plate and you can see much more easily here how it's arranged and it's also easy to get to find a spanner that, spanner that fits this end before you do the other end and I found that this um, where is it? I found that this 5 8 inch spanner fits the nut perfectly. Now in removing that screw that's underneath the um, clamping plate on the head uh, it's very difficult to get a um, spanner in there. I uh, couldn't get it to grip so I decided I had to grind the 
ring spanner down to a couple of millimeters thinner, at least a couple of millimeters, two or three, so that I could then get the uh, ring spanner into the space underneath the head here and loosen it off. Just had to loosen it about that much, probably an eighth of a turn even, um, to uh, make the clamp loose enough that then I could move the whole head back and forth along the bed. The, the head um, will now come off, uh, but I still have to remove the belt. So now you may be able to see where these two cap head screws go. I've removed the tensioner, and there's one cap head screw here and another one here. Once they are removed, then we should be able to take this whole arm off. Yeah, and it's hot supporting the end of the uh, pulleys. And so here it is after removal. Two capings, one here and one here. Couldn't see the bottom one with that um, tensioner mechanism sitting in here. It sits across there and I couldn't see this bottom cap head screw, but there it is hidden underneath. You take the tensioner out and there it is. And there are two pegs as well, but they pop out easily enough. Next, the wiring for the switch is uh, bolted onto the back of the head here and I couldn't seem to find a key that would fit into the cap head bolts on the back of this so instead I'm going to remove the electrical switch off the front so then I can lift off the head and so I've just got these four plain screws to remove and in behind there I'll find screws that hold it onto the the vertical post on the back of the head So I now have the head off the lathe and this allowed me to get access to the motor easily. And uh, I just had to unbolt the motor, the four bolts on the bottom. And you can see how it's all set up here. So now you can see the four bolt holes. Actually, it looks like there's some extra bolt holes in there as well. Six of them, no, eight of them all together. Um, and we say, well, just remount the new motor there. And you can see the uh, counter shaft here with the pulleys on the back after you remove the bearing on the right hand side. Okay, I think it's pretty straightforward. The um, motor system is actually mounted completely separately on the tray underneath so it's not actually connected directly to the um, to the bed. And the old motor has a plate underneath uh, for mounting so I'll simply be able to remove that plate off the old motor and put it on the new motor. Should be fairly straightforward. New motor has a couple of uh, eight millimeter holes in it, threaded holes, so just, they just have uh, screws coming in from underneath, so I need to drill two holes in the center of this plate and mount the motor, it should be very simple. Meanwhile I took a pulley off the, off the motor, and it's here, and uh, the shaft has a sleeve, uh, the, well actually the pulley has a sleeve inside it which is slightly smaller than the shaft on the new motor, but if we flip it over we find that there's that sleeve doesn't go right through and the, the large hole is actually too big so I, I'll have to uh, make a new sleeve for it or something. There was a metal plate over the reset button and I removed that and found the button was actually sticking and when I pressed it the motor kicked in and it goes normally. Nothing wrong with the motor actually but I'm all set on changing to the direct current motor now because it's variable speed. Just in case anybody needs to know how the motor mount works on this uh, Model A lathe with the rear motor mount, uh, here's a few pictures just to show you how it works. Well, I had it all apart. Uh, of course, I've got a new paint job. I've uh, used this uh, metal etching primer to repaint the tray and the parts behind the lathe that I hadn't been able to get to before. While I've got the lathe apart, I thought I'd show you where the serial number is stamped on the very end of the bed, and it's usually hidden by the tailstock here. So here you can see it nice and clear. And you take this number and you go to lathes.co.uk and uh, they have a list of serial numbers and date of manufacture and this was made in December 1955.
So here we see the lathe without the head and it's just been all repainted and then reassembled with the new uh, direct current motor installed uh, except for the electronics which haven't arrived yet from China. So I took the lathe head over here and uh, it only took me about 20 minutes to strip it down Okay, I've got my DC rectifier set up here, but it produces 2R voltage, so these two plugs are set up in series with each other, and the electric heater is in series with the lathe, so when I turn the heater on, the current goes through the heater, and then it goes through the lathe. That's this one. The three heater settings. This is the link belt now installed. Seems to be working okay. Turn the heater on. This is the digital tachometer that I made. Well, at least I just purchased the electronics and put it in a box. And uh, I found that it, that it interfered, with, or at least the um, speed controller I just made. It was supposed to all go in one box, but I found that the power supply for the uh, speed controller needed to interfere. With the Accommodator causing it to malfunction, so I uh, just put a battery in here to, to supply power and keep it separate from the speed controller. So now I've got it running quite slow at about uh, 179 RPM. I need to even more actually. We'll have a look at how this works. It uh, has a little magnet here that I've mounted on the uh, spindle, and when it goes past the sensor, it sends a, a signal which you can see bleeping on the little diode, like a emitting diode on the top, and then of course this plays a digital RPM for an interest of 0.2%, I reckon. And it's just ticking over slowly now. When the circuitry arrived from China, I put it in this uh, plastic box with a knob on the front. Um, thought it might get a little bit hot inside the box, so I put a computer fan in there, and it requires its own little uh, transformer power supply to provide 12 volts uh, separate through that white plug. And I also put cooling fins on the on the circuit. Um, it already had a um, a, little, a small cooling fin arrangement inside, but I put this bigger cool fin, cooling fin set up there. It never gets really warm actually, so it's probably overkill. And the whole thing's just flat there in the box, and works fine like that. The only thing is that that fan is very noisy, and probably superfluous, so I, I intend to uh, 
put a diode in the circuit and slow it down, maybe a resistor, and make it a bit quiet. Here I've changed the pulley on the motor over to the slower speed one, so it'll run at about half the RPM.